Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I wonder what you can remember from your childhood. For some of us, our childhood feels a long time ago, but I wonder what memories you have brought with you to this point in your life. The place or places where we grow up are full of memories, positive and, of course, less positive. In my experience, people who saw you growing up have long memories. Whenever I return to Canesham, where I grew up, and bump into people who knew me as a child, they will often say, I can't believe the lad I knew is now. They struggle to make the mental journey from child to adult. The England football supporters sing, it's coming home, it's coming home, football's coming home despite football having not returned home in the 25 years since that song was released and, in fact, even longer in history. But in today's Gospel reading, Jesus comes home. I'll share the story with you now. It comes from the sixth chapter of Mark's Gospel, verses 1 to 13. Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honour except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. When it comes to sport, the home team is usually recognised to have the upper hand in a match. Take the European Championships in football happening at the moment. At the time of recording this message, England have played four games all at Wembley and they've conceded no goals, winning three and drawing one. Their next match is in Rome, and by the time you're viewing this, we will know what has happened there. There's an advantage that comes from there being more locals in the crowd, willing the team on, cheering their attacks, encouraging their defence and celebrating. But it is different when we have a particular message to impart. Then, instead of cheering on one of their own, the crowd may turn on them. This is what happened to Jesus. Jesus is someone they know. They've shared meals together, played and learned together and grown up together. Now, fairly suddenly it seems, he is different. Now, Jesus is preaching, healing, crowds are gathering around him and everyone is interested in him. It is hard not to feel at least a little sympathy for the crowds in our Gospel reading. Jesus' friends and family are a little irritated and even resentful. And this response leads Jesus to increase the assertiveness with which he is proclaiming the Kingdom of God. 
The locals simply can't move beyond their memories of Jesus as a precocious child or teenager learning the craft of carpentry. The very ordinariness of Jesus as a member of a local family prevents them from accepting his true identity and ministry. But these very ordinary years that Jesus spent growing up in Nazareth are important. They remind us that Jesus really is God with us. In coming to earth in the form of a baby, Jesus had to grow up and learn about the world as we all do from within a particular community. This shaped him as much as it shapes any of us. In the words that follow, Jesus commissions the disciples with his authority to take the gospel into other communities. But in doing so, he, he instructs them to travel lightly. They are not to take any bread, no bag and no money. Instead, Jesus invites them to trust in the generosity of the people they will be serving, believing that whatever they need will be provided. I believe one of the many gifts of this passage of scripture is the invitation to trust that all we need will be provided. And that provision will come through the people we are serving. God will provide through the people we serve. This understanding can, if we allow it, shape our approach to mission and evangelism. Jesus, in commissioning his disciples, reminds them to be open to everything those they encounter will bring to their meeting. It will not always be positive. Jesus acknowledges that and encourages the disciples not to stay where they are unwelcome. Some people think of themselves as Christians. They will have ticked the box on the census earlier this year and on any official forms they complete. They will come to church for baptisms, weddings and funerals and perhaps at Christmas or Easter. But the idea of being with God's people and listening to God regularly does not feature for them. But God asks us, his followers, to preach the message of the gospel. People may be reluctant to hear, and we may not get anywhere. We may even experience a hostile reaction. But it is precisely here where we need to allow these words to shape our approach to mission and evangelism. The disciples were instructed not to go with hands full, but with hands open, ready to receive. I wonder if sometimes in our engagement with our community, we approach with hands full, as if we hold the answers rather than with hands open, ready to discover the kingdom of God amongst those we are called to journey alongside as together we share the gospel. And we then need to simply leave the results to God. We then need to simply leave the results to God. As we continue to consider what it means to be a people of courage, sharing God's love with our community, we would do well to remember Jesus' instructions to engage with open hands, trust in the generosity of those we are called to serve, and to leave the results to God. Amen.